conservative new media viewers and NBA fans around the world. What is up? It is IPFV, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We are here to go over the San Antonio Spurs winning the 2014 NBA championship after they destroy the Miami Heat 104 to 87 in game five of the 2014 NBA Finals. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't make this video last night, but as viewer J.W. Park knows, I was on Real GM, the site, <laughs> for much of last night, right after the game ended. First, I was helping people uh, with transcriptions of the post-game press conferences and then just arguing and discussing what all this means in terms of legacy issues for Tim Duncan, LeBron James, etc. I hope to be making a few more videos about that subject after we get through this video because there are a lot of implications. First of all, let's go through this game. What happened in this game was in the second quarter, the San Antonio Spurs reeled in the Miami Heat, who had gone up by as much as 16 points in this game early in the first quarter. They outscored Miami 25-11 to in that second quarter, and from there, the onslaught began in earnest. The Spurs were simply too much for Miami in this series as they were in this game individually. Kawhi Leonard was the finals MVP. I thought it could have gone to Kawhi. I thought it also could have gone to Tim Duncan, who averaged a double-double in this series, about 15 points and 10 rebounds for the five games. But Kawhi Leonard was a deserving finals MVP. He played extremely well over the final three games of this series. As far as LeBron James goes, <clears throat> he had an incredible finals. Uh, I did some stats last night, and it appears as though since 1987, so for about nearly 30 years, and those are the, the earliest stats I could find, I believe LeBron James has the fifth best individual finals PER number for any player during that period of time. Behind only uh, two finals by Shaquille O'Neal, the 1991 finals performance by Michael Jordan, and the 1987 finals performance by Magic Johnson. The figure is something like 32.14, which is unbelievable. What most impressed me about LeBron in this finals was how well he shot the three-pointer. He appears to have made a slight adjustment to his shooting motion. And what it looks like is that he's pushing out his leg, his legs, but particularly his right leg when he's shooting, almost like he's, he's striding the leg forward. I believe that is done to get more power on the shot. And for LeBron personally, the problem that he's had with his jump shot is that he, he falls backward often on his shot, and that means his balance is far off. So the movement of the leg forward not only, I believe, gives you more power on the shot, but it also would help somebody like LeBron to have better balance. So if your tendency is to drift backwards, pushing that leg out forward is pulling your body forward, which means your balance is going to be better and you're going to be more up and down rather than the fading away, which has consistently been an issue for LeBron's jump shot, both two-pointers and three-pointers. I was really impressed with how well he shot the three-pointer in this series. He shot like 52% on three-pointers, and he took more three-pointers in the series than any other player on either team. So if he is able to continue this level of shooting ability, then he's going to be even better. And I will say this is the best 
version of LeBron James I've ever seen the entire season and throughout the playoffs. He had the best PER of any player in, in the playoffs. He had the best win shares per 48 minutes of any player in the playoffs. Uh, this is LeBron James at his peak. So now the question is, can he get even a little bit better? And how long can he maintain his level before he starts to decline? And we'll have to see those things. He still has time left, though. Like I said, this is now the best version of him, even though he's not quite as athletic as he used to be a few years ago. Uh, so we will see where things go from here for him. Um, look, for the Spurs, this was the triumph of Euro ball, if you want to call it that. This is the triumph of team ball, passing unselfishness, a lot of depth, excellent perimeter shooting. This team, uh, this is one of the greatest finals performances I've ever seen, maybe the greatest. This team could have beaten anybody. They could match up against any of the great teams in NBA history including the 2001 Lakers, including Chicago Bulls of Michael Jordan. The reason why is everybody on the team can play. They all have confidence in themselves, including the 10th guy off the bench, the 9th guy off the bench. They're completely unselfish. The offense is like a machine. It's kind of like, it's almost like a weave the way that they they what they what they run, and a weave meaning guys running towards each other. A guy will pass the ball off and then cut to the middle, and then the guy that gets the ball cuts to the middle, and they just keep doing it until somebody comes free. They just keep looking. the The system they call it good to great. Pass up a good shot to get a great shot. They just continue to move the ball until they get a good look whether it's a three-pointer or a two-pointer. Tim Duncan was amazing the way that he guarded the paint in this game. He seemed to get either blocks or his hands on so many shots in this game. He almost blocked Dwayne Wade. I think he did partially block a Chris Bosh shot. They just, he shut down the lane, even at 38 years old. And I will say that at worst... Tim Duncan was the second best player for the Spurs behind Kawhi Leonard. The truth is Kawhi didn't play well in the first two games, and, and Tim did. So Tim may have been the best player on this team in the finals. He was the best player for the Spurs throughout the playoffs. He had the best PER of any Spurs player throughout the entire playoffs, <clears throat> and he had the second best win shares for 48 minutes throughout the playoffs uh, for any Spurs. The only person who had a better one than him was Tiago Splitter, and that's because Tiago played really, really good defense against LaMarcus Aldridge and in the first round uh, against Dirk Nowitzki. Win shares per 48 measures defense as well. So if your defense is really, really good, you'll boost your number. However, Tiago Splitter played maybe like 10 to 15 minutes fewer per game than Tim Duncan did. So you kind of give the nod to Duncan because he was playing more than Tiago Splitter was. He was kind of, Tiago was getting a boost because he wasn't playing as much in terms of his numbers. Tim Duncan played more minutes per game than any other Spurs player throughout the playoffs. So some of what you hear today <clears throat> from Spurs doubters or Duncan doubters is, well, Tim Duncan's just a role player now. No, he's not. He's probably still the most important player on the team, offensively and defensively. He's the centerpiece of this team. Even though Kawhi Leonard won the finals MVP, even though Tim Duncan's 38 years old, 
Duncan, I believe, now becomes the uh, player with the second largest spread in between when they first won a championship and their final championship. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went 17 years between his first one and his last one, and now Tim Duncan has gone 15 years from winning his first one in 1999 to winning this year in 2014. So it's a incredible achievement for Tim Duncan. It's an incredible achievement for Greg Popovich, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Kawhi Leonard, and the rest. If you enjoy basketball, and I know a lot of our viewers are Jeremy Lin fans, this is real basketball. This is the way basketball was meant to be played, in my opinion. It's not ISO, isolation, one-on-one. This is the entire teams involved. They play excellent defense. The team is very supportive of one another. Nobody acts like a superstar. Everybody's just as important as everybody else. And everybody gets treated the same way. You saw Greg Popovich during this series yelling at at, uh, Danny Green, who's a starter. He'd do the same thing to Tim Duncan. He'd do the same thing to the 12th guy off the bench. And a lot of people really liked that. A lot of people like that the coach was able to coach the players, meaning that he didn't defer to superstars. If you need to get into somebody's face, then Greg Popovich will do it. doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter who you are. So for many people, this is almost like a revelation. This is like the basketball world has been saved, not only from the evil Miami Heat, the way some people will think about it, but from the star-driven, spoiled players, diva mentality thing. The Spurs are the antidote to that. They don't care about individual accolades. They don't care about their images. They don't care about anything except winning and playing the right way playing the way the game is meant to be played. I've made the comparison before. This team was like a better version of the 2011 Dallas Mavericks, who also beat the Miami Heat. The Mavericks beat the Heat with ball movement. And the principle was we can pass the ball faster than the defense can move to cover the pass. In other words, even though Miami Heat in 2011 was extremely athletic with superstar players, we can still pass faster than your legs can move. And so we're going to get open shots and we're going to hit them, which is exactly what happened. Well, the Spurs were an even superior version of that because they were deeper than those Mavericks and they were more athletic. The dunk that Manu Ginobili had in this game was sick. And Manu used to do that all the time when he was five, six years younger. He tried to do that dunk against Oklahoma City Thunder, and he got stuffed. Well, tonight in this game, he didn't get stuffed. That was a big-time dunk. So that's the element that the Spurs had that the Mavericks didn't have as much in 2011. So... What I'm telling you is many people are going to rip the heat for losing this this series, and that's fair. That's fine. This Spurs team was so good, it, it's, it's hard to imagine it. The way that they played, they could beat anybody in history with the way that they played, including Jordan's Bulls including the best Lakers teams. I'm not saying they would have beaten them, but they absolutely could have beaten them. You just don't see teams play like this. 
The Spurs set a record for the series, the highest field goal percentage for a team over an entire finals. I, it was a 52.7 per, or 8 percent, which was better than the Bulls in 1991, and they shot like 52.7 percent. So it was like 0.1 percentage behind. So uh, I'm thrilled. I know one of our viewers said that we only put up videos when the Heat won it. Nope. I love the Spurs. Look, John and I were born in San Antonio, so it's it's we like the Spurs. I mean, grew up with the Spurs. Um, I'm thrilled for the Spurs. I'm thrilled for Tim Duncan. I'm thrilled for Greg Popovich. And if you watched the Spurs after the game, you saw how emotional they were. And the reason why they were emotional, one, they avenged last year's defeat, but the also, the reason why they were so emotional was because they know they beat a great team. You don't get that emotional if you're steamrolling a nothing team because it's not that hard. But for them to be able to beat a team with LeBron James at his peak, and then you get emotional because you've actually accomplished something. And I give credit to LeBron because in the post-game press conference, he credited the Spurs and was like, yeah, this is the way the game's supposed to be played. Because if you know LeBron, he gets criticized for passing. People want him to shoot. Now, LeBron James plays the game the right way. And so he knows when the game's being played properly. And he understands Spurs did it the right way. They were just better than the Heat. And that's all you can say. They were clutch. They hit open shots. And they just didn't let up. I, I will tell you one thing right now. And this is, is a little bit surprising, I guess, in some ways. The Spurs wanted the title more than the Heat did. Not more than LeBron did but more than all of the Heat did. There was more will to win amongst the Spurs players than there was among the Heat players. And that's what happens when you lose, the way that the Spurs lost last year. They were totally determined that they were going to win this title and nothing was going to stop them, and that's what they did. And what's interesting about this entire playoff run is that the best series of all – and the entire playoffs was probably the first round series between the Spurs and the Mavericks, where that went to seven games. And the Spurs only broke away in that series in game seven. The Mavericks almost beat the Spurs in that series. They almost took them out. And what the, that did was it woke the Spurs up. It made them raise their level of play. Miami didn't face that in this playoffs until the finals. So in some ways, that was an advantage to San Antonio. They had to play maximum level in the first round. And after that, they never came off of it. They just stayed at that level. And they had a little bit of trouble against OKC in the Western Conference Finals, but they had an extra gear, and OKC didn't. And when it got to the Finals, Miami just they just couldn't deal with it. They, they tried. They tried hard in this game, game number five. They came out and just were incredible early on. But Spurs had too much depth. And they had too much confidence. Because San Antonio won the two games in Miami the way that they did, they knew they could come back. They knew they could beat Miami no matter how many points they got down in the game. With their pace and with their depth, they could always reel Miami in. And that's exactly what happened in this game and all throughout the series. So... We congratulate 100% the San Antonio Spurs, Tim Duncan, Greg Popovich, Kawhi Leonard, Tony Parker, 
Manu Ginobili, and all the rest. Another thing to say about San Antonio, they have eight players on their roster of 14 or 15 who were born outside of the United States. This is the most international team in the NBA, and that's not an accident. They go after foreign players, and it's worked. So it's a real statement on the globalization of the game. This is where the game is headed. There will be more international players coming in. Just because everybody around the world is playing basketball now. And it's growing and growing and growing. And in those different nations, the facilities are getting better. The training is getting better. The coaching is getting better. You will see more talent coming in from everywhere around the world. And that's great. That is fantastic. And I say that as somebody from America where the game began. I love that. You want the best athletes, the best players from all over the globe. And the Spurs are a perfect example of that. Even Tim Duncan was born in the Virgin Islands outside of the continental United States. Continental meaning the main United States contiguous body, not Alaska, not Hawaii, not the Virgin Islands, which is a U.S. territory. So, San Antonio Spurs, 2014 NBA champions. Phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. I'm just thrilled. The Spurs now are probably the best team since the Jordan Bulls. I know there'll be arguments from the Lakers fans about that. Uh, the Lakers did go to, I believe, one more finals than the Spurs have, but the Spurs aren't done. There's no reason to think the Spurs won't be back in the finals next year. They'll be a little bit older, but their younger talent's going to get even better. Kawhi Leonard's going to get better. Danny Green is going to get better. Some of their other younger players are going to improve. Patty Mills, Tiago Splitter. They're going to be right there next year. So the run's not done yet. It's great to see. And again, shows you that basketball is in good hands and nothing is permanent. People thought the big three had everything on lockdown, but they didn't. As far as Miami, they'll be back. They need to make changes. They need to get younger. They need to figure out what's going to happen with the big three. Uh, they need to get deeper. But they will be the favorite, certainly, to come out of the East next year. I believe they're actually the favorites on the opening betting lines to win the title next year. So they're, they're not finished. However... They became only the, the fourth team to go to four straight finals. And of those four teams, the 1960s Celtics, the 1980s Lakers, the 1980s Celtics, and now the, the current Miami Heat, three of them finished two and two in the finals. So the Lakers of the 80s went to four. They won two. The 1980 Celtics, they went to four. They won two. Only the 1960s Celtics won more than two titles when they went to four finals. So the Heat have accomplished history, and they're not finished yet. I would be very surprised. As long as LeBron James stays in Miami, I would be very surprised if the Miami Heat are not in the finals next year which means that would make them only the second team in history to go to five straight finals. So don't count them out yet. They're not done yet. If you're a Miami Heat fan, don't be too discouraged. It's not over yet. So the Heat did themselves proud by getting to this moment. LeBron James is still the best player in the world, which is what Greg Popovich said. 
in his post-game press conference. It's not over yet. So if you're a doubter of LeBron, don't get too happy because he's not done yet. So that is it for now. Your comments below, thumbs up, thumbs down on this video. It's been a great year. It's been a lot of fun for us. Of course, we're NBA junkies, just like many of you listening to this video are. Uh, I will put information in the video description so you can go and watch highlights of this game if you did not get a chance to watch it. We also encourage you to come and join the Conservative New Media Facebook group. Information for that will also be in the video description. There are over 3,000 members in the group and counting, and we'd love to have you come and join as well. Again, I am PFE Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. It's been a great, thrilling, fulfilling NBA season. We are looking forward to next year and, of course, during the summer. It's going to be a lot of movement this summer. As myself and many other viewers are Lynn fans, we know there's a good chance Jeremy's going to be on the move. We want to see what happens with, with the Miami Heat. We want to see who the Spurs can bring in and what some of the other teams are going to do as well. So basketball never stops, as the commercial said. And uh, that's just the way we like it. Hope all of you are having a good day or good night, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Take care. We will talk to you soon. And again, I will be working to make more videos to follow up on this story. Where does Tim Duncan rank now among the all-time greats? Who is better, Tim Duncan or Kobe Bryant? Who is better? LeBron James or Kobe Bryant? What is the top 10 all-time list now as a result of these finals? These are different subjects that I want to discuss, and uh, I will be working on videos addressing those subjects one by one, so stay tuned for that. Until that time, take care of yourself. We will talk to you again soon.